Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's night time, and as you can see, the temperature is lower than it usually is. <laughs> because there's been an update to the game that has a few, quite a few changes, and that may mean some of our solutions need to be updated. We'll, we'll have to monitor them and see if they still work. Uh, for some people, the solutions will need updating, some people maybe not. Uh, first of all, the temperature. It varies now between the day and the night. So daytime on Mars, it's around 20 degrees Celsius. And nighttime, it's around, well, what you see now, minus 75. So that is colder than what we already have. So instead of the regular suit, there is now a new hard suit that absorbs more damage. Um, interesting. The arms... Uh, fold backwards. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure you ever want a suit with the arms folding backwards like that, but that's the storage. That can't be the front of the suit, can it? No, because the head step forward. Uh, anyway, getting distracted. Hard suit is a new type of suit which absorbs more damage, but also, at the cost of more power, can absorb greater temperature differences. Now, I don't know whether there's any problem with our current suit as far as temperature differences are concerned, but just in case, I thought it best to probably print both the hard suit and the hard suit helmet, and they can both be printed in the electroprint. Uh, the only downside is you will need uh, lead, and you will need invar. There we go, both of them. Uh, so our helmet doesn't actually have... Let's see, can we just swap the two? Uh, but hesitant to try this while we are... Pressure. Yeah, pressure critical, critical, but it's recovered. Good. So this is our new helmet. Looks um, interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess we can just store this one wherever I have storage space. I don't really have much storage space. And then the suit itself, of course, uh, not the backpack, the suit. <sighs> Will that come with any of the tanks? Uh, I think I'm just going to go into somewhere with pressure, if not with oxygen. And uh, just, oh, there's a new movement system as well. I'll cover that in a minute. It's not great. Um, they fixed the jumping going sky high. Uh, I'm not sure that should be fixed, but it certainly is less easy to damage yourself on Mars now. So let me just uh, change to the suit. And let's make sure I've got this open. Oh, that's a backpack suit. Now, will you change? Yeah, you... Yeah, let's switch back. Uh, it doesn't have any of the, um, the tanks. So uh, we're going to need to um, just drop everything out of here for a second. Uh, this is going to be horrible. Swap over. Uh, let's grab our canister first of all. Air tank. Nitrogen tank. We need a filter, and we need our life support. Okay, so we now should be changing tally into the uh, into the hard suits, and we can take this and again store it wherever we want to. Uh, we may want to have a suit storage. You can build one of those that explicitly stores uh, suits and stuff like that, and put spare tanks in it. But for now, we have the new storage suit. Uh, the only thing I've got to wonder is. Uh, it says it uses more power to cool or heat things more. I hope that's proportional to the temperature, i.e. that it doesn't constantly consume that extra power. If it does, then I may have to switch back to the default, at least to start with. So, new movement system, yes. So, I can no longer jump, jump <laughs> between, between uh, tall buildings. I now just jump a tiny amount, even though the gravity is lower. Uh, it will be different if you're jumping off terrain, apparently, uh, off in the distance. You can't see it yet because it's dark. Um, so do do bear that in mind. But also, they've changed the movement speed and the movement system, and it feels sort of awful. Um, I don't know what about it is, though. That's hard to, that's hard to make, that's hard to criticize it. But it's when you're moving sideways, it's sort of, it's certainly less precise. And I hope they revisit it, to be honest. It um, needs a bit of work. It just makes it... When I'm trying to move around and then point at something, so that's the, usually the issue. Um, it's just not very... Not as nice as it was just before this. The previous system that was in the patch before was fine, apart from the jumping. So if they could... Um, well, maybe if they, they watch this video, they'll, they'll maybe have another pass at that at some point. But yeah, it's just slightly... Slightly, I don't know what you call it, not imprecise, but 
You don't stop at the end of the movement. You see, you settle backwards. If you have a look at the lines, move sideways. You'll see it sort of just backwards after you stop. And that's sort of awful if you're trying to point at switches and stuff like that, I think. So other than that, um, straightforward. And it's it's not too much of a bad idea that I can't jump on top of there. Um, it certainly will stop me damaging myself. Um, that's certainly what was happening. But in any case, let's get on with the rest of the episode. I just thought I'd make a few quick updates about um, what's new. There is a new reagent processor as well that we can put down. Um, do I have any bare surfaces? Let's take a look at... Uh, oh, sorry, not reagent processor, but um, reagent reader. There we go. So that's um, something we may want to look at. And I think that's pretty much it as far as new electronics are concerned. What I would like to do is to start trying to look at the machines and see, and it may not be something we can finish this episode, but see if there's anything we can figure out. Um, depending on the recipe, for example, if I've got uh, the cable coil selected here, and you see where it says zero out of 0.5 copper, if I can find out exactly what that needs, and furthermore, if I can request a certain thing from the vending machine, the idea being eventually that um, if I press go on here and there's nothing in there, or something along those lines, it will go and try and find it from the vending machine and supply it to the machine. That would be that would be really nice. Whether that's possible, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so let's take a look at what we can address through the logic system and we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. And in fact, I think I can figure out a little bit more about what it is about the, the, the walking system as well. If I point right between those, push forward and press left, then stop pressing left, you'll see it's still floating to the left even after I've... So let me tell you when I stop pressing left. Left, stop. You see it's still heading left as if it's back to the force system, so it takes time for me to stop walking left for some reason. It doesn't take time for me to stop walking left. I've le I've not, I'm not going left. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it would be nice if they could fix, fix that, please. But otherwise, uh, you know, a decent update as normal. So, um, what we're going to just do is build an auto lathe. I've just created a new um, one of these, and this oh, actually, there's a new auto place mode. This I'm looking forward to. Uh, you hold down V, and then we can scroll wheel to select rotation options, but we can't really do that with a because we can rotate this to any direction. So, let's just see if I can, for example, put you there, and then let's get some cable, and let's see if I press V and then scroll wheel. Uh, that's not great. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm mouse wheeling, but there are more rotation options. Uh, I, I guess it's not gonna. It's only gonna choose between the one that I have selected at the moment, so only straight. So it's not gonna go through the other options. Fine, that's no problem. So if I choose junction, then oh, uh, there we go. So those are all valid options, and I can scroll wheel through them. I do like that. I do like that quite a lot. I'm gonna leave it as a junction because I may put more machines there. Don't uh, don't get all. Uh... <laughs> annoyed <laughs> with me uh, and yeah I actually do like this uh, quite quite a lot um, that will make it so much faster for building I don't like that it's V mind you um, that's something that uh, I'm going to have to remap because you can't use WSAD and V very easily unless you're going left uh, which I'm not always going left depends on whether you're right or left handed uh, no no it really doesn't yeah, no, it doesn't depend on which way you are. That's fine. So, um, right, so let's just put this junction in place. Uh, um, junction. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that bug again. There we go. So this should now have some power, hopefully. And what we're going to put beyond here to start off with is just some test um, logic. And let's just see what we can address about this machine. So if we turn it on... Cable coil, so that's fine. Let's see what it tells us. Uh, where did I put that logic? Let's grab you. And let's see what the reagent reader gives us. So uh, we're going to rotate that. Uh, can we? It'd be nice. Yeah, and I'm, this is another feature suggestion as well. It'd be nice if I could press V on this and rotate it, even though it isn't cable. Um, because we're often rotating these things when we're placing them, and uh, obviously it's it, it's not got valid locations, but on things that don't need valid locations, it may have to press a uh, modify key and then scroll wheel to just change their, their orientation. 
uh, instead of using the you know the insert page down block on your keyboard. All right, so let's just grab all of this and then we shall just finish this off and see what's. I'm going to leave this this cable sort of unfinished. We don't have to worry about it. There we go. And same thing with you. Ha, that's so much better. Okay. Right, so this thing is only well, it's connected to things other than that. I should put a, put a power control in there as well. Do I have a spare one? Uh, if I don't, I should have. Yeah, power controller. Just to keep this network isolated from the rest for the moment. It doesn't have to be anything uh, special. And rotate that. Let's just turn on the power. There we go. Okay, so this logic should only be able to access this one machine for the moment. Fine, let's see what options we have. So, logic writer. Uh, it's not logic writer, I need to replace that. Oops, wrong thing. It's like a never ending. <laughs> see, did you see what that movement was like? Far too. Oh, oh this is horrible. Um, and also, the other thing, this jump. I can't even jump up over one one shoot. <laughs> it's like, please, stop disabling me with every update. Oh, dear. Uh, we should be able to jump at least above one shoot. I mean, come on, guys. Seriously. We're on Mars. Um, raise that value a little bit more, and please fix the movement. Uh, in any case, let's just grab that battery, <laughs> and uh, let's just switch these out. It's actually a little bit easier to switch these out uh, using the mouse than anything else. All right, then let's try replacing that properly. And uh, we're going to get a reagent reader and rotate you. There we go. On, yes. You're going to complain. All right, so what can we read? We can read the auto lathe. Okay, contents. Uh, reagent reader, flour, milk, eggs, iron, gold. Is this just going to test one thing, I wonder? So is it going to test against... Huh, so let's... Uh, can we... Yeah, can we go backwards? So does it want... Where's copper? All right, contents. Let's change to required. Okay, so we're able to test against specific things, which is probably a good way around to do this, because, well, I suppose we're going to need a reagent reader for every component that way, but... We can then say, hey, do you want copper? And then hopefully trigger something else to supply it with some copper. Now, it's got a value on that, so we had hope you'd be able to select the the actual value that we're requesting from the vending machine. But 0.5 is not a quantity that the vending machine's going to be able to supply. So I think what we're going to have to do is take that value and put it through a math processor and just say something like either, well, we, we can't use floor, we have to use ceiling. So that will that will basically round up to one, I assume, with ceiling. So that should do just fine. So that's one way of reading what the machine wants. Okay. But you are going to have to have quite a lot of chips to read what one machine wants. Uh, slight downside, but I don't see any other way of doing that unless you can hook it up to a computer somehow, because each chip only really gives you one value. We don't have any arrays yet. That's unfortunate, uh, because then we need programming to address the array. Anyway, that's a, that's a topic for a different sort of implementation, anyway. Uh, so, then we've got to have a look at what the vending machine can actually supply us. Okay, I've been putting some more chips down, doing a bit of experimentation, and I'm a bit, a bit stuck, to be honest, at the moment. Maybe there's a missing component that I just don't have. Uh, let me tell you what the problem is, and maybe you can comment down below. We may have to leave it for a short episode this time. And I'll do some more research off off screen. Uh, what I can't find is any way to read um, things like whether you know whether this is set to copper or whatever it's set to. Because remember, we're going to have maybe I don't know seven or eight of those for for this one machine, and it'll tell us for each of them, you know what what that's set to. But if I can't then take that value and ask this machine to supply it, then we're a bit stuck. Um, let's start off with what we've got. We've got required here, and it's saying four. G's of iron, which is fine. So if I were to supply this with 4G's of iron, 
this will change to zero. Yeah, good. And that means that I can use this value to actually request iron. However, I'd need to manually know what iron is. And there's no, no, it's, <laughs> my backpack really must make that nuclear battery. Uh, let's just grab that and sort it out. Oh, there we go. Now, where was I? Uh, yes, so without manually assigning a value, we could do that. The wiki does have integer values. Not that that's easy to set, because uh, there there are like eight or nine digits. It'd be nice if I could just read the the value that this is iron, or I've set this to iron, or just read the hash value, and then output the hash value to the vending machine. So on the vending machine side, we've got a logic writer. And in fact, let me just uh, let me just explain this logic reader first. So I'd first of all see what I could read from this reader. Uh, you know, could I see what it was set to? And therefore I can equate to the two things, the, the, the type of thing and the um, the uh, the quantity it wants. So the kind of things that I can address on here are quite disappointing for the logic reader anyway. Power, that's no good, it's, it's on. Error, no errors. Setting is zero. And I think that may be just how many things it requires. It's set to zero at the moment. If I pull this handle, will that setting now say four? Probably will. Yeah. So that's the quantity in this case. And on. <laughs> that's it. So th there's no point using the logic reader at all. So we can get rid of you. And put you away for a second. Let's then just revert back to what I previously had. And we can do that quite simply with a, a straight piece. There we go. So the logic writer then, can the logic writer, uh, you know, for example, can it, it address the problem? So input is the reagent reader, which is coming back through that way. Output is the vending machine and then request hash. So you'd think that that would, would have the hash. Uh, well, uh, this is the thing. It's, re it's reading the value. I need to read the hash from somewhere. This is letting me write the request hash to this, but right now it's trying to require the request hash of four. <laughs> That's not good. So I looked to see if there's a separate hash reader in the computer that isn't. Logic I.O., memory processor switch. I can't see anything else. The same thing in the Electro printer. Um, there is a circuit board hash display, but that's just for the consoles, um, which would be very odd if that's the way that I have to, to read things in. Um, that's... Yeah, that's imprecise, and it probably won't work for this because you can have things with multiple ingredients. So I'm not sure how we read each one of the ingredients without setting things to a specific hash. I need to be able to read that in somehow, and I haven't yet found any way to do so, which is probably going to stall this idea until at least we can find out how to do that. Now, if someone figured out how to do that, feel free to let me know in the comments. I would be very happy to hear about it. Let's put you away. And I think we may have to leave this episode short just to give you guys an idea to comment on that particular problem. This is what we're going to try and solve anyway. We want some way of getting our ingredients into the machines whenever we want them for any of the recipes. And that's perfectly fine. We've got a nice vending machine here to pull stuff out of. But I don't have any way of telling it <laughs> this specific thing and this quantity go. Uh, I can get the quantity easily enough. I can write the quantity easily enough. Uh, just not anything else. So if, uh, let's see, can we say, instead of hack request hash, can we say anything else? No, the only thing the logic writer can do is write the hash. So how on earth would we write the quantity? Um, because if this has got stacks of 50 in it, then the only thing we can do is tell it to vend or something, but that would require us to have an ability to tell it to vend. And clear memory? The only thing we can do is clear memory and lock it with a logic writer. So that doesn't look good. Um, yeah, how do we tell it to vent? Hmm. I may have to do some more research there. One second, let me just check what that clear memory does other than probably just clear the screen. And the wiki isn't, the wiki isn't updated yet. So let's, uh, let's do what the next option is. The only other 
only other sort of logic I.O. I can think of is like the slot reader and the slot writer. So, oh well, the slot reader, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have a slot writer of any kind. So, logic mirror, batch writer, none of those are any good. Logic writer is the only thing we can tell this to do. Um, so, we'll stick with the slot reader then. So, let's put that down and drop you for a second. Okay. Let's turn you on. And you can read the auto lathe. Uh, have I got this connected right? Uh, let me just double check. Slot reader. Mm, yes, I have. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so device. Auto lathe. Uh, well, we could read the auto lathe, but uh, we actually want to read the reagent reader of the auto lathe, which might be a long list of stuff. Again, <clears throat> drop down lists. Drop down lists. Uh, let me just do that off camera one second. And yeah, that's fine. Um, the auto lathe is the only thing we can read. The slot reader won't let us read any extra information from the reagent reader chip at all. It's purposely designed only to read the auto lathe. And the easiest way to just select the thing is just to disconnect it. So it's not connected to the rest of the network, but is connected to your chip. That's far faster than scrolling through a list. It seems strange that we have to use that to find something, but uh, that is perfectly fine. So we then, oh, at least it's working for the moment. So then we can only read the usual import and export slots. So that again is not very useful. Uh, we can rotate this and we can read these, this slots, I guess. So let's just quickly do that. So you get an idea of what you can do. Um, let's just rotate your slot reader. So now we have to just rotate it once. So that it's reading only from this network side of things. And then we can look at the vending machine, turn it on. So we can read the import slots, the export slots, and the storage slots. Uh, fair enough. And then whether they're occupied. So slot, the first slot is occupied. And then we can, I guess, look at its hash. Yep, so that's the first thing that's put in there. I think that's the one for iron. That's no good, however, because I'm just reading what's in here, not what's in what not what this requires um you know so that's going to be a bit of a problem uh i can also read the quantity so there's 10 that's iron the damage zero class is 19 not sure what that is but it's occupied and we're back around to the start again so if i then change to slot four it is occupied yeah and then its occupant hash is entirely different that's nickel i think yeah so you can see if we go to here we've got iron and we've got nickel so we can certainly read what's in the vending machine. That's not a problem. But telling it to dispense is something else entirely. I don't know if there is a way to do it yet, which is going to put our plans on hold if there isn't. So, yeah, that's the problem as a whole. I'll leave this episode here because it is a short one. Um, just giving you the pieces. I'm going to continue to do some research, but that's what I want to actually build. Oh, my. This movement system. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so those are the pieces, and uh, hopefully we'll solve them next episode, if they're solvable. If not, I will move on to something else. I think we may well extend the underground layer, and maybe put in this second level above the top here, and uh, possibly build out some more solar panels. That is decreasing slowly, I think, but I'm, I need to check what it's like when it's dusk to see, because they have modified also the solar value, so that on different planets you get different amounts of solar energy, which means 10 solar panels on the moon is not 10 solar panels on the Mars or 10 solar panels on Europa as far as the energy you get out. So the further away from the sun you go, the more solar panels you got to build. That's uh, that's more realistic. That's pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, I may need to build more solar panels. In fact, can we tell? Because if I go up here, we can probably get a, a wattage value via the, um, the, the mouse cursor. Oh, let's just see what's here. Uh, okay, so now... It's the sun's coming up. It's not quite facing the, the panels yet because they're using the simple algorithm. Um, oh, sorry, it's not the algorithm, it's the panels themselves. So if you look here, they don't point directly at the horizon. They're at 15 degrees off the horizon or, or more than that, 20 degrees maybe. And uh, until the sun gets to about, you know, right there, 
because they're not going to produce maximum power. However, you can already see, even at maybe 80% of maximum power, they're only generating 365 watts. So that is something like 150 watts off per panel. And if I've got uh, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 panels, I'm uh, down 1500 watts, which would have been three solar panels. So, you know, uh, I would have previously, well, now I need, th um, yeah, it would have been three solar panels down. So that's a reduction in the power coming in. So I'm going to go have to build more panels. Not a problem, just something you have to deal with as part of your uh, building maintenance, if you like, to catch up with the developers. So I'll leave it there. If you like the episode, feel free to like, subscribe and share. Uh, do let me know in the comments, particularly lots of discussions about this system before we get something built. Can we actually do it? Can we not? If so, let me know. I know, we, I know we're supposed to have a hash reader of some kind. I just can't find it. Maybe I'm being blind. Entirely possible. Maybe I'm being stupid. Even more possible. <laughs> do let me know. But otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching.